A very warm welcome back and welcome back to this week's video. So within this video I want to focus on a specific topic. I always get asked a lot of questions and for one particular question this is kind of like the response I want to give within this video to share it in a broader form. So oftentimes the most prominent questions I get is do I even need therapy? Why do I need therapy? And then on the other hand how would I know that something's wrong? And I had a harmonious childhood, so why would there be anything wrong with me? So let me address those two questions because they go very closely together. So I would say in 80-90% of the cases when I worked with clients, the issue of a problem, so the core behind a problem, was not obvious at all in the beginning. So in most of the cases, what always remains is the presenting issue is not the core of the issue. I've seen that so many times within my clients that when we have like the preparation call, we would talk about some of the background history for me to get a better understanding of the situation. But what we would always understand then is that even the suggestions that clients make, what could be aspects that have something to do with their problem, in the end, when we find ourselves in the session, completely different things come up. And so this is the truth I want to talk about today. Because for one, it's really hard and tough to find out the real core behind your issue if you're not putting yourself into this receiving mode of really relaxing your mind. So what does that mean? That means that while I'm talking to you right now, I'm in a conscious state. So whatever I'm formulating right now is based on rational thought, based on a lot of conscious thinking. And this is why I can communicate with you like this in such a way, in such a social manner. Now, the problem though is if we're dealing with more complex problems that have been with us for years, and this is the case for most of the problems. Most of the times we develop these kind of uh, patterns and beliefs throughout our childhood or throughout our teenager years. And then we don't really recognizing them and we're carrying them on with us into our adult life. So they have been with us for a really long time of our lives without us recognizing. So this is the one truth. And together with that, of course, the second truth is that you'll have to put your mind into a receiving state. That you kind of like have to enter an inner dialogue with yourself where you can strongly listen and see what's truly going on beyond. And this is easier said than done in a way because if you are not initiating this kind of inner talk, then you won't really find yourself in that situation. So what does that mean? That means that you'll be staying in the conscious state the entire time. However, the responses to your problem are found in the unconscious and subconscious. So you would have to enter that realm and you would have to enter that space to communicate with yourself on this level. This is of course what I do together with my clients where we uncover all these beliefs that have been hidden for their entire lives. I also experienced that myself. You can have so many suggestions, you can have so many ideas on what's going on with you, but before you're not truly looking deep inside yourself, you won't be able to know. You simply won't be able to know because your mind is shielding you off that memory, which is the exact reason why you have been stuck with this memory and belief and pattern for such a long time. Because your mind is shielding you and your mind is not allowing you to feel it because otherwise it would be too painful and your mind doesn't want that for you. So that's the one thing. The second thing now where the entire aspect of how do I even know that something's wrong, I had a harmonious childhood comes in. And it's such a sad truth in a way, because we would assume that the most crucial cases are the ones where we obviously know that something bad has happened to someone in their childhood. And obviously those cases break my heart. And sadly, there are too many of those in the world. And next to that, what's also extremely dangerous is the hidden process. So the hidden process would present itself in a way that Everything was good in your childhood. Everything was really great. Your parents were loving, you had amazing siblings and you were getting on really well. However, though, the danger that lies here is that we are unconsciously conditioned even more so by the people who mean well in our lives. Let that sink in because that's still happening to you on a daily basis in your adult lives as well. So if you start paying attention to that, you'll recognize it. 
you'll recognize how people are just throwing beliefs at you, are just throwing opinions at you. Most of the cases, without you asking them to do that. <laughs> Most of the cases, just like that, without you even asking for that. And this is, of course, hearing that on a daily basis, our mind acts on the words that it hears. So hearing that on a daily basis, our mind is being conditioned, which is one of the reasons why we should obviously shield ourselves from the opinions that are thrown at us, from the media that we consume. But this is another video. So what I want you to take away from this video is these truths that before not looking into your unconscious, before not diving into this inner dialogue, it'll be really hard to truly uncover and understand the core of a problem that you're experiencing. And the second big thing, of course, is we got to remind ourselves just because everything seemed fine, just because we cannot really pinpoint the moment things went wrong in our lives, doesn't mean that we haven't been unconsciously conditioned. And this is such an important aspect because we tend to dive into this understanding of I'm feeling fine, everything has been fine, nothing major has been happening, so I don't ever need therapy, everything's totally great with me. However, though, if we think about it, we as human beings, we're still running on this ancestry code of really being driven by ancestry behavior patterns, but we're living in a modern world. So that's a big, big clash that we need to monitor. And I don't know if I'm asking you how many times have you actively been paying attention to this? How many times have you reverted your behavior based on this? How many times have you recognized your mind playing tricks on you and stopped your mind in the process? What would your answer be? <laughs> so let this be your trigger to look deeper, to look deeper within and to not mistake a situation for what it seems. And thank you so much for tuning in again. I'm looking forward to talking to you again in the next video and the next week. Again, share this video with anyone who might benefit from it. Leave it a like if you liked it. Also subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next week again. Have a good week. Bye.